So yeah, um, I would say that I chose Tim Burns because a lot of his motivation, his artwork, his his his, his, his like story behind why he does animation as well. Like he puts all his emotion and like his own trauma into his animation. I would say that his inspiration came from German expressionism. It started off as as a modern art movement back in nineteen twenties, inspired lots of art throughout Europe. German expressionism that came at more of a cinematic medium and it created lots of psychological tension. And if you look at loads of Luke Burton's films, he uses that in Vincent, Beetlejuice, Frankenweenie. Yeah, and he liked to rely on silhouettes and shadows to create a lot of this tension. Yeah, I just think it really creates an atmospheric film. <laughs> Similarly, like Wes Anderson, he wants to create a world that you go into. Like, I think he does that in a very different way to Tim Burton. He, like, Tim Burton goes down the dark and grungy way, and then if we look at Wes Anderson, he goes the child whimsy of it. And I think he does that really well, and he's able to kind of use his style to make something that's visually pleasing in a sort of more of a soft, pastel, very happy and enjoyable life. And this is, they're very different. You look at Tim Burton, and he's dark and grungy, you, you see that. And, that you look at Wes Anderson and he's using his col like colours and he's really creating a theatrical masterpiece that's just beautiful. The fact that he puts so much effort into his mise-en-scene and his design, it's effective at what it does. It draws you in, it's so deep and there's so much to it that you just get absorbed into the movie even if you don't get it, yeah. <laughs> you know? And this is not talking about his writing and his like actual storytelling this is just his maison scene and his development through that and it just you can't fault him no, in that yeah. to that about like Tim Burns with um his films he the type of camera work that I love that he always uses the fact that is his POV shots in the beginning of really every single film he uses like a shot where you are going in to the set you are going into where they are where the film is set um, for example, with Nightmare Before Christmas, you are going, f you, you, you start off going through the forest and you go into this circle of trees and you go down the Halloween tree and then you come out and you go through this town and you go through the main gates of the Halloween town. Um, and it's just a great way of bringing you into the film. Mm. Um, it's a great, great way to start it and to put you on the level of, of the characters. Wes Anderson does a similar thing, but with either stop motion or with like putting you into like the story like you'll get a book out and the book will kind of and he, he uses this sort of like tag team storytelling so it's so a great example is Grand Budapest Hotel at the, the beginning of that so there's like one two three four four different like so it's like a recount a recount a recount yeah. so when you get to zero who is the person that's telling the story you're not hearing it from his perspective. You're hearing it from someone else's perspective, from his perspective. So you're so it's kind of like layers. So when you actually actually get into the film, he uses that technique of getting the audience into it through this way of storytelling to allow him to be able to create such a big, vast space mm. to then kind of paint the walls the colour he wants and make it because it's not real it's it's some in someone's head it's a story and like a, i think on style and design as a whole wes anderson just sort of has a hold on it he uses stop motion for his stunts for his like big um big buildings he uses it like to add animals ski chase scene in brand food Rest hotel where it's a stop motion or like it's a animated and it's all done with like little mini props and sets and he just like and the guy you know the the little ski guy goes yeah instead of like just oh just just cg it, CG it yeah, or, or it. green green screen it like we're doing like he you know t made the time and put the effort into doing this and like his crew is just incredible for doing that and actually putting that extra detail in and going that extra mile in those scenes and, like, and then obviously his actual films that he has stop motion animated he used real animal hair yeah. to give texture to them so there was like fingerprints on it so you could tell that it was being animated instead of it being synthetic hair where it would stay in the place that it was so it looked more realistic. It's the same with Burton, it's like he does stop motion, he does live action and like 
no matter what kind of way he does it, he is capable of taking his same style. I still think it's amazing how he puts all of his childhood trauma into a movie and still make it as like a Christmas and Halloween film, like Night Before Christmas, is made, he, he made it based on his childhood trauma and his childhood upbringing in California. And that was, and he still made this film to be one of the biggest Christmas yet Halloween films in history. And I think it's amazing how he can do that. But then he can also make things like Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And like, that's just fun and colorful mm. and bright and clumsy. But yeah, I still think it's great, and he still brings a twenty, like a nineteen twenties style. He still brings to this day and age, and he still makes it good, and he still makes it interesting. And yeah, I just think he's great, and how he does it. His style is just so much more warm and light, and you know, he uses warm tones in that way to kind of make you feel comfortable and kind of bring you in. Wes Anderson wants to make you feel comfortable, but see these, these topics, like, because he covers very depressing topics, like he, suicide, is he, mental health, family members, you know, family members over dying or disjointed, like, relationships between parents and ch children, like, there's, there's a lot there and he discusses these things, but he is able to do it from a childlike point of view and be able to kind of really kind of shift shift it away from being really tragic subdue it and kind of it's not it's obvious with it it's just yeah. so subtle and the way that the rest of the film is and how soft it is it, it, it kind of softens the blow but you're still able to digest those emotions and you know he uses the costume to really really push that forward um with how what they wear and how they wear it and the colors that they wear you know like red he uses red all the time and he uses red as a especially against his backdrops, which is pastels and soft colours, he uses anemetric compositions. So he p uses that red to pull either the character forward or push the background back. But he uses these primary colours of yellow, blue and red to really pull out the characters and make them at the forefront. Tim Burton is very, very similar. He just has his own like different kinds. Of, like He uses a lot of cold blues. Like, it's not even black and white or different shades of black. <laughs> it, it's cold blues. That's like the scene in Beetlejuice when they're going through the corridor. That's cold blue. Um, but in terms of like death and that, it's, it's Frank and Weenie that got me the most. And it was how this little boy, and I think he did it on when he was younger and he had a dog. So it was based on his childhood trauma yet again. And it's how these two, you know, this little boy and this dog. And, you know, they're best friends, as every little other boy is. Like, his dog gets run over by accident, and he goes through so much grief. And he's like, you know what, I'm, I'm a science nerd, I miss my dog, I'm going to bring him back to life. Uh, so I think he just kind of ex put that into a film of how he felt when he was younger. It's, in Beetlejuice, it's not as traumatic, it's not as exaggerated, it's just, oh look, we're dead now. Do we go to the afterlife? Do we not? Do we stay? And that's like the whole point of it, really. It's of that film. It's them figuring out what do they do now. And it's like it's, you wonder, like, is that what it's really like? It's just a waiting room where to go. <laughs> and it's 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 really interesting because no one ever really thinks of that's what the afterlife is. Like, and yeah, I just think it's how he inter interprets that is uh, very interesting and very unique.